love building websites and you love building websites. We all love building websites. But the reality is that every time you try to launch a website, you're going to need to understand web hosting. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you the top five things you need to know about web hosting so that you can successfully build and launch your websites. The top five things you need to know about hosting are interchangeable no matter which hosting platform you go to. But what's not actually interchangeable is the quality of the service of the hosting platform itself. So before I talk about the five, I just wanted to quickly note, make sure that you shop around and find a hosting service that is everything you need it to be. I use Hostinger for all of my hosting solutions because it is fast, it's secure, the prices are great, the quality of it overall is, in my opinion, unbeatable. So if you're interested in checking out Hostinger, there's a link down in the description for you to check it out. I'm gonna be using it for all of the examples I talk about today. Let's go. The very first thing you need to know about are the types of hosting that you might need depending on the project that you are launching. You got your shared hosting, you got your VPS, you got your dedicated. Which one's the right one? Let's answer that. Shared hosting is the most common type of hosting you're gonna find. It's great for small and medium trafficked websites. Your website is sharing a server with a bunch of other websites and that cuts down on the costs, makes it more affordable for you, but you do sacrifice a little bit of dedicated performance. It's not great if you're gonna get 30, 50, 100,000 hits a day on your website, lots of traffic, you might need to bump up to something a little bit beefier. So if you are like me, have a portfolio site, you don't get hundreds of thousands, but maybe a few thousand visitors a day to your site, then maybe shared hosting would be a good solution for you. A VPS or virtual private server is a big step up from shared hosting. This is a virtual space that is dedicated to you and your site and your site alone. That means it's gonna have better performance. It's gonna render your websites faster. It's gonna fetch information from databases faster. It doesn't have to share space in a cramped little box with everybody else. It's gonna be better for medium to large size projects that get a little bit more traffic than the old shared hosting solution would offer you. Then you have dedicated servers. This is the most expensive solution because it's a physical server that is dedicated to you. It's gonna get the fastest times, the best performance, and you don't have to share anything with nobody. This is about you and it's only about you, but you're gonna pay for that type of performance. Those are the three most common. There's other types like WordPress specific or Minecraft servers, things that are tuned and dialed in for specific purposes. I'll leave those for you to explore if that suits your needs. All right, the second thing you need to know about hosting is less about hosting, but more about the domain, but they go hand in hand. They work together like peanut butter and jelly, like ham and cheese, like pickles and chocolate. Okay, maybe not pickles and chocolate, but domains are a very important thing. The domain name is that actual name that you can read and understand. You're gonna link that domain up to your hosting and your site will then be live. All you need to know about domains is you need to have one if you want a website. Having your domains and your hosting all in one space makes it very, very convenient. It's really, really easy to do. Get yourself a domain, launch your website, get a domain. All right, the third thing you need to know is probably the most complex on this list, and that is DNS. That stands for Domain Name Servers, or maybe you've heard it called Name Servers. Depending on how you're building your site or launching your site, you might need to redirect or point your name servers to your hosting provider so that your website can actually go live. It's basically the connection point that says, hey, this domain name has something to actually make it go live. There's a connection, put it on the interwebs. The biggest things you need to know about DNS is how to find those name servers, how to create new records, and what the most common records are. In 99% of hosting companies, you'll have to go to the cPanel. Hostinger has actually built out their own custom H panel, their own Hostinger panel. I like it because it looks a little bit nicer, but you can see it's very, very easy to get to your domain and then your DNS or your domain name servers. From there, you can access, edit, delete, add new ones to your DNS records, and this will change how your website is connected. Now let's talk about the three most common types of records that you'll make inside of your DNS settings. The first one is an A record. The A record is the most common of these records. It basically designates what the host is and matches up that domain to that host. If you're using a service to create your website and they ask you to point your A records to them, 
this is most of the time what it's used for. The next one of these important records is the C name record. The C name allows you to basically set the defaults or the standards. So it's the www version of your domain and without the www version. So you just want to make sure there's a default that says, hey, anytime somebody plugs this in, whether it's the www or not, we want to go ahead and kick over to this specific website. You'll find C names used quite often if you're launching websites using certain builders or platforms, they might ask you to direct a C name. That's what this is. The last important one you might need to know is your MX record. That's your mail exchange record. This will allow you to kind of reroute your emails. All right, the fourth item on the list is bandwidth and data transfer. If you have shared hosting, for instance, you can't be uploading 50 terabytes of information every single day. That wouldn't allow you to share that server. So you might need a higher level or you might need to find a hosting provider that makes sure that they offer unlimited bandwidth or data transfer rates for you. That way your website doesn't bog down, it doesn't shut down, it doesn't crash when people are trying to visit it. All right, the last on the list is SSL. That stands for Secure Socket Layer. This is the difference between going to an unsecure website that just has that little HTTP and then going to a secure website that has HTTP S, that little S stands for secure, right? The security of your website. So you wanna find a hosting provider that offers really easily connectable SSL certificates. It should be as simple as clicking, adding, connecting, and now your website is secure. So when you're looking for a hosting provider, I suggest you find one that makes that process very easy and you don't have a lot of issues troubleshooting it and setting it up. Well, that's it. Those are the top five things you need to know about web hosting. Again, if you're looking for a good hosting provider, there's a link to Hostinger down in the description. I wouldn't talk about it if I didn't actually use it and genuinely love Hostinger. I think it's a great solution. So if you're looking for one, check the description for the link. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and web development just like this video. So make sure you subscribe, hit that little bell notification icon so you know when another video like this one comes out. I hope you guys are having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. I hope you're making amazing things. And I hope you're building, launching, and hosting successful websites. See you in the next one.